In this video we're going to be looking at how to take various forms of equations, namely point slope and uh, standard form, and change them to slope intercept form. If you'll recall we have three different forms of equations really since about seventh grade called slope intercept form and it's pretty comfortable, it's pretty easy, we know what to do with it, we can easily find our slope, our y-intercept, and it's pretty nice to work with. So what I want to show you is how you can take these other two forms, point slope and standard form, and turn them in to slope intercept form. So here's what we do. If we're going to convert an equation to uh, slope intercept form, first thing we have to do is simplify both sides of the equation. Remember an equation is two expressions set equal to each other, so we're going to simplify both of those expressions. And then we want to solve for y, that is get the y variable by itself, no coefficient, on one side of the equation. So let's take a look at what this is like. So our first job is to convert this to slope intercept form and if you're playing along at home you should know what form of equation that is. It is point slope form and so to convert that what we have to do is first simplify both sides of the equation. So let me look at the left first, y minus 4, nothing to simplify there, it is what it is, but over on the right side I can distribute this 3, which a lot of you have been itching to do this entire time. So we distribute that 3 and we get 3x minus 6. Now there's nothing else I can simplify over there. So my next job is just to get the y by itself to isolate it. So the only thing keeping this y from being by itself is the fact that we're subtracting 4 from it. So to undo subtracting 4, we would add 4 to both sides. These will cancel. I'll be left with y on one side, and now 3x negative 6 plus 4 would be negative 2, and I've now converted that equation, <coughs> excuse me, into slope-intercept form. And interestingly enough, if I were to take this equation into a program like, say, Desmos, and plug it in, and this equation and put it into Desmos again so that I can see what the graphs look like. The graphs of these two would be exactly the same because they are the same line. For the next problem, what we're going to do is we're going to convert 5x minus 3y uh, equals 15 to slope intercept form. And again, if you're playing along at home, you probably recognize this form. It is, that's right, standard form. So 3x minus y equals 15, and we want to get this in slope-intercept form, so we're going to simplify the left side. Well, there's nothing to do there. That step was easy. Simplify the right side. Nothing to do there either. So now we just have to get the y by itself. So the things that are keeping this y from being by itself, first, we've got this 5x paired up with it. And notice there's nothing in front, so I can assume a plus there. So to get rid of that, I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides. Well, plus 5x minus 5x, those cancel out. And I'm left with negative 3y. Notice that sign has to come with it. Equals negative 5x plus 15. Now, one thing you may have noticed that I did that is not, strictly speaking, necessary, but is kind of nice, is that I wrote the minus 5x, notice the minus sign came with it, I wrote that first. And the reason I do that is that in slope-intercept form, we're pretty accustomed to having the variable come first and then the constant term. And so I'm doing that really just to stay within that um, expectation of folks. If you were to write this as 15 minus 5x, there's nothing wrong with that. It's not incorrect. Uh, it's just I'm writing it this way to make it look more like slope-intercept form. Back to the drawing board here. We've got negative 3y equals negative 5x plus 15. We want to isolate the y, so I have to get rid of this negative 3. Well, we're multiplying by that negative 3, 
So now I have to divide. But if you'll remember, when I have multiple terms, multiple things added together, and I'm dividing, I have to divide each one of those terms by what's going on there. So I have to divide negative 3 by all of those. Multiplying by negative 3 and dividing by negative 3, well, those are inverse operations, so they cancel each other out. And I'm left with y equals negative 5 divided by negative 3 is just a fraction, 5 over 3, I will leave it as. x and then 15 divided by negative 3 is negative 5. And there you go. There's what that line looks like in slope-intercept form. So let's look at one more. And you may not recognize this form because this is no kind of named form. This is just mm, term and variable salad. There's all kinds of stuff everywhere, but it is linear. So let's take a look at it and see what we can do to turn this into slope-intercept form. <clears throat> So the first thing I look to do is simplify on the left side. That's easy. There's nothing to simplify. Simplify on the right. Also nothing to do there. So now let's get our y by itself. So the first thing I'm going to look at that's problematic is that we're subtracting 25. Well, I can undo that by adding 25 to both sides, leaving me with negative 2x minus 5y equals 25. Now I've got this minus 2x to get rid of. I can do that by adding 2x to both sides. And now I have negative 5y equals, and remember I'm going to write this up front just so that it looks more like slope-intercept form. Now in order to isolate the y, I have to divide everything, all three terms that I have here, by negative 5. And I'm going to write the answer to that over here so I have some more room. The negative 5's on the left side will cancel, leaving me with y. 2 divided by negative 5 is just negative 2 over 5. Remember, we generally associate the negative sign with the number on top, or just leave it out front. And 25 divided by negative 5 is, of course, negative 5. And so there we have our equation in slope-intercept form. So if your equation is not in slope-intercept form and you would like to see it that way, which oftentimes is kind of nice and simple, remember to simplify both sides of the equation and then isolate the y, that is solve for y.